Hey guys, welcome back and happy new year. I hope you've had some good times and some rest over the holidays and that 2021 has been treating you well so far. I thought for our first video of the year I'd do something special, so today we're doing our first full D&D party portrait on this channel. This is the first party from our main playgroup and these are the characters that we played through Lost Minds of Fandelver with. This group has some really fun dynamics, and I thought I'd chat a little bit about each character individually as I draw them. One of the added challenges of working on a party portrait is making sure that all of the characters are to scale with each other. So right now, uh, you can see me just blocking out all of the heights of our characters and setting up so that everyone makes sense together in the final scene. Right now, I'm drinking some mulled wine. It's left over from New Year's Eve. I cooked off the alcohol since we kind of had a quiet night and weren't really drinking, but it is a little bit spicy since I put a lot of cloves in, so hopefully it doesn't mess with my voice too, too much. Since I had a little bit more time over the break, I decided to record a longer speed paint broken up into smaller sessions over a couple of days, which is why the draw time on this is longer than it usually is. Having a little bit more time to work on the drawings let me play around more with the character designs and build up more of the extraness that I think most of us expect from a D&D character design. First up here is our dragonborn barbarian, Sora. She's a wild surge barbarian who follows the blood god Korn and prefers to solve most of life's problems with a great axe. We're actually about to run into her again in our main campaign. She's working with a hunting party that's trying to track down the white dragon that we're going after. So it should be interesting to see her again with a mix of new and old characters. Running into her again is actually the reason that I started thinking about doing this full party portrait. Uh, she was our main damage dealer and our tank for most of that campaign since she tends to charge headfirst into any combat situation. It worked out pretty well most of the time since our other party members were more ranged and could hang back to fire off spells and arrows as support. It was really interesting to see the wild surge feature in action. Every time Sora enters Rage, she rolls on a table of wild magic effects, so it can be a bit risky to stand too close to her when she gets angry. At the time, we were using an unofficial version of this subclass, but it also just got released in the new Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book. Side note, uh, we did end up ordering Tasha's for our group. Uh, I was thinking of maybe doing some Tasha artwork and a review of the book once I've fully gone through it. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see. Dragonborn are really interesting to draw. Most of the time I'm drawing more humanoid body types, so working with something different is always a fun challenge. Uh, for this one, in addition to working with a more reptile-based face shape and a scaled texture on the skin, I added more claw-like structure for the feet and hands. I also added in these points on the head. I'm not sure if they should be horns or more like bearded dragon spines, but maybe that depends on the individual character that you're making. Since she's a barbarian, Sora shakes off hits with her muscles and white-hot rage, so I gave her lighter gear and some simple foot wraps in addition to her signature great axe. I also added in her blood idol hanging from her belt. The idol drives her to make bigger, more impressive kills, and offers different punishments and boons depending on the amount of blood she spills each day. It also created a few character conflicts in the party, because a few other characters were pacifists and less inclined to kill first and ask questions later.
One of the things that I've been working on is adding more texture to my character designs, both in the form of clothing folds and also adding different textures within the garments themselves, so varying things up in order to have maybe cotton or linen, some leather, and some fur. It's been an interesting process figuring out how all of the different clothing folds work. I'll maybe link a couple of tutorials that I like in the description below because depending on where the fold sits on the body and the type of fabric, they can look pretty different. But it's something I've been practicing and I really do want to get better at doing garments because I think they can add a lot of flavor to your character designs and they're also just a lot of fun to work on. I like it so far. I'm still figuring out exactly how I want to do coloring work in Clip Studio Paint. I find that I usually like to mask things off and work with more solid brushes, so I've got the quick mask going for me here and I'm sorting things out that way by just expanding the selection so that it fills out underneath the line work. It took me a while to get this exactly down how I liked when I was working in Psy, so it'll probably take a little bit more fine tuning to get it nice and streamlined, but it's working for me okay so far. I had a lot of fun working on Sora's design and I'm excited to see what will happen when we run into her again in one of our upcoming sessions. Vlad is our cleric and is the least chaotic member of the party. Or rather, he was the least chaotic member until an unfortunate incident got him possessed by a demi-lick. Vladimir is a cleric of Ayun, the god of knowledge, and is one of the more laid-back members of the party. I set him up with a simple chainmail tunic and some vestments with the symbol of Ayun, as well as a basic mace with an accompanying eye motif. And of course I had to draw him wearing his signature half top knot. I feel like at some point every D&D party needs a grumpy old man to tell the plucky young adventurers how the world is, and this party has not one, but two teenagers in it, so his presence was definitely appreciated. Both Vlad and Sora were mercenaries when we met them, and we found out that the person who hired them was kidnapped, so they were very concerned about getting him back to make sure that they got paid for the job. Vlad's possession ended up being quite the ordeal because if he failed his wisdom saves at any given point, he would sleepwalk and rifle through the party's things, cast high-level spells like Finger of Death and Blood Rain on whatever poor horde of goblins we were fighting, and generally cause trouble for us. Fortunately, one of the artifacts that was lost in the mine was able to undo the possession and get Vlad back to his usual self. He had originally retired after we cleared out the mines, but he's since started hitting the gym and getting back into mercenary work with a multi-class into fighter. We've seen Vlad a few times since we originally left him in Fandalen. He's come by Neverwinter to help us fight a couple of smaller battles and one-shots that we did, and for now he's staying put in Neverwinter. Hopefully we'll see him a little bit more in our current campaign, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes for us. He 
here again, I'm adding in some additional textures like scratches on the shoulder pauldrons and some embroidery along the fabric vestments. I really want to practice getting better at these little motifs because I think they can add a lot of interest to a character design or an item design and it's a nice way to incorporate some of the world building from your universe into your character designs as well. In this case, for our religious characters, I'm trying to incorporate some of their god's symbols into their overall design since it's a pretty important part of who they are and how they work as a character and it just didn't feel right to, to leave it out. When I'm adding color into a character design, I tend to try and keep it pretty simple using a few core colors from the character's background. In this case, I'm using the blue of Ayun and some steely grays to make up the armor. In general, for D&D characters, I try to keep the palette more analogous and a little bit toned down unless there's a good character reason for having them be really bright and colorful. Otherwise, I think most traveling gear makes sense to be a little bit muted since natural dyes tend to be browns and blacks and grays with maybe some greens mixed in there. Religious colors are one of the exceptions for this. If a god has certain colors associated with it and you're working with a cleric or a paladin, I think that can be a great way to add some color to the mix, or you might just have some really bright and bubbly characters who would definitely buy the brightest thing in the shop if they had the opportunity. So those are a couple of ways that I like to use character traits to incorporate color when I'm putting together a design. I did try to cut the painting process together so that we're watching each character from start to finish, but uh, when I was doing the work, I did jump around just a little bit. So as I'm adjusting size and position here, you might see other characters blinking into the background briefly, just as I'm setting things up to make sure everything is to scale and that all of my line weights are correct. For the most part, I try to keep it consistent so that you guys can just watch me work on one character from start to finish, because I think that is a little bit more fun to watch. Invari is the character that I'm currently playing as. She's a former forest hermit and archfey warlock. Before taking off for an adventure, she lived and worked in a healing facility, working on herbal remedies and other non-magical healing practices. She's cautious, but also extremely curious, and the latter usually wins out, which is how she ended up leaving her home. Her starting design was really simple, more like basic traveling gear than adventuring equipment, but since we started out at level 1, and backstory why she didn't have a lot of belongings, I think it still works for her within the story. It's pretty much just a longer cloak, high-waisted pants, and practical boots. I also added in a pack for her because as a player I tend to hoard things, thinking that they'll be useful later. Not just in D&D either, please don't look in my Skyrim chests or my Animal Crossing storage, they're both a complete mess too. The bag of holding really is my best friend. So far I really like playing as a warlock. It's an interesting class to start out with because it is so customizable. and. I think for that reason I really would recommend it for people who are new to D&D because you can switch out a lot of your class features and other options at level up. So if you've started out building someone who's a little bit more martial, say they've taken Pact of the Blade and they tend to work a little bit more in melee and you're not enjoying that, you can switch up what you've chosen and switch to something like Pact of the Tome and maybe build them out a little bit more as a spellcaster. 
I think it's really helped me refine the way that my character's mechanics work so that I have a really good idea of what I can do in any given combat situation. And I think it's a good way to kind of stick with a character for roleplay reasons while still fine-tuning the actual gameplay mechanics. A lot of this group did choose to switch out their characters to use as alt characters for one-shots and mini-adventures because they had played a character in another one-shot that they were interested in running full-time. I'm currently still playing as my warlock, gotten a little bit attached, frankly, but it's been a lot of fun to see her go through a few groups of friends and meet a lot of different types of people and find her way out into the world after living as a hermit for so long. I'm not entirely sure how she's going to handle fighting something as big as a dragon since she is still a little bit of a nervous person, but we'll have to see how that goes. I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> You might notice that I'm occasionally having to do a few scribbles somewhere on the canvas while I'm working in Clip Studio Paint. I'm still trying to figure out a bit of a connectivity issue that I've been having with my tablet. Basically, when I'm in the middle of a stroke, it'll stop detecting it, and I'll only get half the line that I've drawn showing up on the artboard. I'm trying out a few different fixes, but the issue tends to come and go at random, so I'll be drawing for an hour and it's fine, but then all of a sudden it'll stop communicating and I'll be really struggling. I've tried to cut a lot of that out, hopefully it doesn't interfere with things too much, but if you've ever had this problem, let me know in the comments below, because uh, I'm trying to fix it. The character that I'm starting on now is Serenity, or Ren for short. She is our gnome druid and also the only party member with a noble background, so when we're dealing with high-ranking officials or trying to sneak into somewhere fancier than we are, uh, she's usually the face of the party. Ren is also one of our pacifist characters, so she tends to try and dispatch bandits, goblins, and other random enemies through non-violent means, but this doesn't usually work out the way that she plans. In our first fight, she happened to crit on a simple conjure flame cantrip and ended up doing enough damage to kill a bandit in one hit. Seren's also only 17, so very often when she accidentally commits horrible acts of violence, she ends up being pretty traumatized by the results. Seren's also a good example of the second type of brightly colored character that I mentioned earlier, where because of her bright and bubbly personality, she'll always choose to be dressed in vibrant colors, and you can also see this in the design of her flower crown, which is also her arcane focus for spellcasting. Ren is also a character that has joined us for a couple of one-shots since getting switched out. In the last one, they were fighting a different Demi-Lick. Uh, the big bad for our campaign is named Arthendal. He is a Lick who we accidentally released in Lost Minds, and he's actually been split into five different parts, all with different aspects of his personality. He's likely going to be our long-term big bad for the campaign and will be facing off against different aspects of him. Right now we're facing off against the portion of him that contains his wrath, who is teamed up with the hell god that I mentioned in another video. They're trying to raise up a floating city from underneath Neverwinter, which would destroy the city in the process, and uh, we're trying to stop that from happening. The final character in the party that I'm working on is Kara. She is our half-elven ranger, and she is an orphan from a disgraced noble house who started adventuring with the group in order to look for information about her family. 
Kayra is also our other teenager in the group. She's quite the polar opposite of Ren, who's always happy and cheery. Kayra is an antisocial alcoholic who would sooner drink than chat and is more inclined to shoot you with an arrow than make friendly conversation. That being said, she is extremely helpful to have along on our journey because of her familiarity with the forests and her accuracy with the bow. We actually almost lost her in one of the early fights in the campaign when we were sneaking in the back door of a mansion and bandit hideout. They had a no-tick in the back caves guarding the doorway. Kara made direct eye contact with it and took the full brunt of the necromantic blast that it can fire from its eye. We ended up having to dispatch the big monster pretty quickly so that we could tend to her wounds and make sure that she was going to be okay. Since Kara spends most of her time in the woods and we are pretty far north on the Sword Coast, I set her up with a high neck shirt, a jacket with some fur trim, and also some high boots. Basically things that would be breathable and flexible, but still keep her warm in this particular climate. For a ranger character, I feel like they're never really apart from their bow and quiver, so I set her up with that equipment as well. If it seems like we're breezing through this particular drawing at a higher speed than the rest of them, that is because I'm drawing this one for the second time. I actually got all the way through her design and coloring before I zoomed out and realized that I had downsized my lining brush, and the weight of the line work was completely different than the rest of the characters in the set. There was just no saving it. It looked completely wrong, so I went back and started again from scratch. So this one's going by pretty quickly because I'm pretty warmed up and I've already made a lot of the color decisions that are going into it, so it's going by a little bit faster. Since we finished this first campaign, we've had a run-in with every character in this party except for Kara. During the celebration festival at the end of Lost Minds of Vandelver, she actually joined Huxley Swiftbolt on his bender and ended up getting put on a boat out of Neverwinter and we're not sure where she went. The only thing she left behind was a message carved into her chair at our house in Vandalen that said, don't look for me. So I'm not sure if we're going to see her again anytime soon. We have met a few other seafaring characters in our last couple of sessions, so if we're jumping on a boat ourselves, maybe we'll run into her. Who knows? Now that I've finished with all of the character designs, all that's left to do is arrange them in a composition that makes sense. Going with kind of a classic here, tallest character in the middle and the shortest ones on the sides and layering them a little bit so that they feel like they're interacting with each other in a nice way. It was a lot of fun to revisit these characters. It's actually been almost a year exactly since we finished that first leg of the campaign and it was really nice to look back on that part of the story we've been making together. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this longer speed paint. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that it's a little bit late. I want to do a more consistent voiceover across the whole video for this one, and I underestimated how much time that was going to take me, but here we are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think it's going to be a good year. Subscribe below and follow me on Modron Collider on Instagram and Twitter for more artwork, and I'll see you real soon. Bye, guys.